So guys, if you see my other video uh, with no spoilers, uh, that has been uploaded first, this video will have spoilers in it. So be warned, going forward, I'm going to go into detail on what happens in this film. It is a brilliant film, but you have been warned. Um, so we've got, like I said in the uh, non-spoilers, uh, this film is just so well written, time, effort, and a lot of thought has been put into the writing of this film. We have our main female lead, which is Rain, uh, played by Carly Spaney. Uh, we have a synthetic who's a f he's absolutely awesome, this synthetic. He's called Andy, and he's played by David Johnson. We have most probably the male lead, which is uh, a guy called Tyler, played by Archie Rannox. Uh, we also have some other characters on there. There's a character called Kay. Uh, I'm not too sure what her role in the um, in the group was. I think she's uh, just somebody that's always been part of the crew. Um, we have some other people. I'll go through them as we uh, carry on through the, uh, the, the spoilers review. So, basically, uh, this fits in perfectly with between Alien and Alien's timeline for the technology. Uh, it's not any. It's not super clean technology. It's all really. It's like industrial, dark, uh, old machines that are there. Um, we basically uh, join Cali. Uh, we join Ray with Andy on the planet, and they are basically. It's a mining planet which they are desperately trying to get off. Um, she effectively has uh they have to work long enough to pay off their debt to wayland yutani the corporation and it was great seeing that all over the place um so she has just worked all the hours needed to pay off her her debt unfortunately um as soon as she goes to say look i want to leave the planet now um i've paid off my debt can i have a, a travel pass they, they turn around and go no sorry you have to do another five six years um and that's what basically encourages uh encourages rain to to join the group uh she gets a call from tyler and the call's so cool it's like a, a retro 80s uh watch with the um um uh with a video call conf uh, system on it and i know we can do video calls on watches um can we do video calls on watches no we can do phone calls on watches i don't think we can do video calls on watches but this was a proper video call um that was a great flashback to like 1980s kind of sci-fi futuristic tech in that sense really really cool what seeing that uh i'd love to be able to do a video call or watch and just see my friend and just talk to him that sort of thing uh, that would be absolutely brilliant. Sorry, just sneeze there. So, um, basically, the, the the plot of the story is she's wanting to get off the planet. Her mum and dad had, di had died a few, two, three years ago. Um, her dad found this uh, synthetic android, or this synthetic, played by David Johnson, uh, and his name is Andy, and he found this synthetic on the trash heap. He actually managed to fix Andy, and then programmed Amni to always be there for Rain and to be a friend and come do whatever's best for her. So his, his prime directive is to do whatever is best for Rain. Um, and then she gets this call from Tyler, played by Archie Rannox, and uh, he's basically saying, look, we've, uh, we need you to come over, come over now. She goes over to where they are, and that's where we meet the whole, cra the whole cast. So we have uh, Tyler, we have Kay, we have uh, Born. Uh, Navarro and um, they're basically a crew of this small ship, a cargo ship and they found a derelict ship in orbit around their planet uh, their planet is this really uh, it's, it never has any sunlight it's just this dark miserable place um, and it's got a, a huge rings around it uh, in orbit and there's a ship in orbit that is slowly decaying, it's got about 36 hours until it hits the rings and then it'll be destroyed in the the rings of the planet so they want to um, go to this ship but to get on the ship they need andy because he's a wayland yutani uh synthetic and the ship will give them access because of andy so originally she wasn't going to do it um but she is desperate to get off the planet 
uh, and she agrees to going and joining the group. So they take off, they shoot straight up in the air in the ship, uh, and then they dock with the Romulus. And the, this ship is really cool. It's not just one ship called Romulus. There's Romulus and Remus. It's two ships uh but joined to be one huge massive research vessel and it looks really cool um so they go all the way up and then they dock with this uh, gigantic ship called romulus uh, with the help of andy they get access on board the ship and they crawl the way through into the main ship and then that's when the film really starts to get going um effectively they all want to go to another planet which is about 11 sorry which is nine years away uh the ship that they have this small little ship it doesn't have uh, it's just a cargo ship um so it doesn't have any cryo containers so what they need to do is go into this uh, huge uh, research vessel and they think that um, there'll be some cryo tubes get the cryo tubes put the cryo tubes on their ship and then they can all go to cryo sleep and fly off to this other planet which is a great idea makes perfect sense um and that's basically their their one goal to do that so they get the cryo containers they get them on the ship but they find out that they've got like 25 percent of the fuel needed to run the cryo containers so because it's nine years they've got like three and a half years worth of life support on the cryo tubes so they need to get more fuel for the cryo tubes so they go further into the ship uh they go into this really cool so sort of like, i think it's a bridge there's a, a half melted android um which is all like there next to a giant hole in the floor if you've seen aliens movies you know what i mean so they uh they find the room where the uh, cryofuel is they go in they remove one of the capsules of cryofuel and that's when that was their mistake that's when it goes wrong effectively by doing that it's really the cryofuel that they removed was being used to cryo high um was to cryo freeze loads of uh hand crawlers um so they're taking the fuel out all these the temperature for all the hand crawlers rises up to the point where the hand crawlers can come reanimate they all break out their little containers because it's just like a plastic bag holding them in place um and that's when they obviously they uh, get under attack they do get out uh they upgrade andy because uh andy the uh, synthetic uh he's he's all like his chips a bit knackered his software's a bit broken he has problem motor problems um he has trouble talking uh but this chip that they uh, they get from another android the one on the bridge that's half melted they put it into him it upgrades him it, uh, it upgrades his it fixes his motor skills and all these other things so uh he then is able to take them out they get them out they get away from the hand crawlers and everything's good they're going right, right okay um we need to we need to get away but the um uh the ship's pilot uh navarro uh she gets a face hugger on them they use a cryo thing to get it off which is really cool um there's some really clever things in this that's not been done before in aliens so rather than try and cut the alien off for all these things they use the cryo fuel uh to freeze the tail the hand crawler comes off um and then the android uh in the control room they activate it they get it to work again uh, and he basically gives them the warning so you're gonna die but they don't pay attention um and then basically that's when we we go into it getting quite scary to be honest um there's loads of great things in there the the, the main research vessel it's so cool um we see uh the uh a couple of people get killed uh navro uh the chest burster comes out of her and that's when having to run away from it uh Kay's scared and she's trying to get away from it um the uh the guy play uh, the guy spike fern uh who plays Bjorn. um i can't remember how he dies um oh dear how did he die now um I can't remember i don't know if uh, an alien got him or not uh but effectively what they need to do is um get to get to their ship 
because Navro died, when uh, the chess person came out, she kicked the controls, and the controls sent the ship, their little cargo ship, flying around the the research vessel and then they're crashing into uh, one of the cargo bays so they need to now get to the cargo bay uh, and that's uh, their goal um, on the way uh, Andy is like right we need to go and do this he takes them down um, to get this the black goo if you remember it uh, and this is meant to save humanity because humanity is not meant to be in space and there's loads of health and longevity life issues with humans trying to colonize planets but this um, black goo will save them all uh, so they're trying to get that and get back to the ship uh, there's loads of uh, really really good scenes uh, I'm not going to go for every single aspect of the film um, but I have to say that uh, David Johnson's uh, performance in this was just absolutely fantastic. Carly Spaney was brilliant in this film, absolutely loved her. She was a, a, an absolutely great, strong female lead. She um, she didn't give, the wins weren't given to her, she had to work for them. Uh, there's a number of times she thought maybe she's not actually going to get out of this, there's going to be a good twist. She luckily does, but only just. Um, and then towards the end, we get to see um, the pulse rifle, which is like an early version of the pulse rifle. Uh, it operated slightly different to the other one, but it's it's still really cool to see it in uh, to see it in action. Uh, and there's a fantastic scene uh, towards the end where they need to get up to the, they've got the goo. They need to get to the uh, cargo bay where the ship is, and there's a load of aliens uh, coming for them. And uh, one of the really smart things that I've uh, not seen in any Aliens film, uh, and I would never have thought of, um, Carly actually um, disabled, sorry, Rain disabled the uh, the gravity, so all the aliens, she could then shoot all the aliens, and the blood wouldn't go anywhere. Really, really, really smart. Like I said, they put a lot of thought into how they're going to do this film, and it shows. So she ends up killing all the aliens. They can get into the uh, elevator, which can take her to the top. Um, but they, that doesn't work because the elevator doesn't work in zero G and she's just turned off all the gravity. Uh, so they, uh, they then have to try and escape by going all the way up to the top and they just sort of kick off. Great jump scare around that point um, where an alien catches her uh, or grabs her foot, but she escapes. And it goes to this wonderful scene where they're trying to get away and there's all these problems with the gravity because it kicks back in. Um, they do manage to uh, get back. Their friend Kay, um, in the meantime, she's quite, quite badly injured, but she's uh, able to get back to their ship. And they were going to inject her with the black goo because they said that if they do that, then it will fix and heal her. Uh, we find out that it's not, it's not the case. It will fix a healer, but it'll mutate her. And because um, uh, she doesn't know that, she still injects herself when she's on board the ship, and she's actually pregnant. And this is one of the best Aliens 3 kind of flashback type of moments where um, she then gives birth to, for lack of a better word, a pod. The pod births a... What looks like at the beginning a human child uh but then it disappears and then in very very uh, very short time like five six minutes um it's then this gigantic nine foot tall alien human hybrid uh with a humanoid face that looks like a humanoid face um really quite scary um if it's it, it plays on your horrors in your mind uh, brilliantly done and uh, she has to then battle this um, humongous hybrid alien um, all in the time while all the, while this is going on you're constantly being reminded of how much time is left uh, when the um, when the mine uh, cargo ship it bounced off originally uh, before you went to the cargo uh, hold uh, it hits uh, a big chunk of the space station um, which vented a load of uh, ozone and that accelerated the amount of time between 
from it being 36 hours up to almost 46 minutes and we have this constant time reminding going through uh it's a very engaging movie you you are rooting for rain you're rooting for andy because she absolutely loves andy he is he is her lifeline to her happiest memories of her mum and dad uh she calls him her brother uh which is great and it just it just emphasizes how much andy means to her even though he's a synthetic um she she cares for him and she absolutely loves him as if he was her brother um and he was really really good the uh bjorn character uh he was a bit of a and his character is an ass towards andy because uh his parents were killed uh when a synthetic locked him in a, a room uh, but to save like 12 other people so he just absolutely hates synthetics and he throughout his time with andy you can tell how much he hates him uh even though andy did save him from falling down a hole um you know he, he still absolutely hates the guy uh and his death i remember now uh he tried to save he tried saving k um but uh when um when he did uh it, it was basically his time in the movie and it was um, a very interesting point because before we've seen an alien being birthed when it jumps out the chest we've seen that before and then the next time we always see an alien it's because of they're then fully grown we now see that the alien jumps out the chest it finds a specific place and then it cocoons itself like a chrysalis like a butterfly and then it emerges fully grown which is why they go from being about yay big to, to fully grown seven foot monsters uh because they cocoon themselves in a, a place and uh their their bodies grow uh, an exp uh, exponentially fast time frame uh he they k and beyond stumble across it while i was trying to get off the ship he had this really strong uh cattle prod for like a better words and he cattle prods the cocoon uh and it does look like it's dead because it's kind of melted uh but then he um he, he then gets like stabbed by the tail because that whips out and gets him um and then he falls down and because he did injure it with a cattle prod and there's blood dripping the alien blood dripping out it then drips on him and uh, it, it starts melting off his fingers it melts his arms and that sort of thing and then his can his chest sort of explodes i didn't quite understand that bit maybe there's something below his chest that the acid then blew up as well and that's why it kind of exploded a bit not more like a bit of a type thing uh but that was quite cool um but yeah so she then has to have to fight this hybrid who's scary as hell um and it's 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 great to see that, um how the hybrid was so different to the one from aliens 3 and this one makes more sense because obviously the baby was already starting to, the, the baby had already started growing so it must have just reprogrammed the dna and come out more human than anything else uh and then to to, to defeat the alien um the cocoon that the baby was in was still on the floor yeah full of acid she choked throws it on the floor it sucks them out and then uh, she's able to disconnect the cargo hold with another switch uh and that's when that flew into the rings and blew up and she got back onto the ship and uh, yeah they're able to put the uh, put andy in the crisis because the aliens like cut him with its fingers uh right near the end uh when um when the hybrid was born so it was a hybrid actually sort of injured him um so yeah uh, there's most probably lots of things i've missed out uh there's most probably some uh, interesting things i've missed out but if i tell you everything then will it really be that much fun when you watch it um like i said i've literally been back 30 40 minutes now since i've seen it so it's also quite fresh i would definitely go see this film again um this film was fantastic it was so well done uh it's one of the best alien alien films i've seen for a long time um the the people in Conv covenant covenant the film covenant film was just 
stupid. It, a, a lot of really dumb writing, a lot of easy routes to get out uh, in the writing on that. Uh, the characters in that film were not rememberable at all. None of them made an impression. <sighs> you know, I remember loads of people from Alien, Aliens, uh, Alien 3 even, because that cast was a very memorable cast. Um, Prometheus, do I remember anyone from Prometheus? I remember the guy that turned into an alien, and I remember the main female lead in that. I can't remember her name. Um, and I've seen that film three or four times, because uh, I did like Prometheus. Convent, I don't remember anyone's name in that. That film was just so bad. Such a bad film. But it's this alien Romul uh, Romulus is a fantastic start. We also got to see, which was really cool, uh, a fairly good look at the alien xenomorph when it was dead about halfway through the film because it, it had already been killed from the original crew of the space station and its skin had like rotted away and you could see the skull underneath but it looked really really awesome. Um, the fact that we also got to see um, Ash, uh, who is now Rook, played by Ian Holm, that was fantastic. It was so good. And he was just as evil as he was in Alien. Um, that was a character that I was really happy to see. Like I've said in the other video, the CGI for him on his face wasn't particularly great at the very first few scenes. Um... But then they really nailed it down, and it did look really good afterwards. Um, and they they did really well with that. He uh, he's he'd be melted in half from the waist down, um, and it it just looked like there was a big bag under on uh, on the bottom of his uh, body. Uh, it would have been nice if we saw lots of like electronics and guts and stuff, or more electronics and guts and gunk. You know, that would have been really nice. Uh, but yeah, it, it, a really good film, really well written, uh, absolutely perfect cast. The casting on this film was fan absolutely fantastic, and they all did an incredible job. Um, I'm definitely giving this a 9.5 out of 10. I don't know how they could have made it better. The CGI could have been a little bit better for Ash, sorry, Rook. Um, the xenomorphs were brilliant in it. The hybrid xenomorph, scary as hell. Really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, the the attention of detail that went into creating the world, the environments around them were phenomenal. Um, just a just an all round fantastic film, <clears throat> and I strongly suggest you go and watch it as soon as you get a chance. So I hope you like the review. And like I said, this is full spoilers. So. Uh, let me know what you think when you've seen it.